last weekend, a little family vacation, there was 22 of us in a three-bedroom house. We had a lot of fun, and, and uh, so the, the guys started playing. Uh, first, we started off playing volleyball, and so we kind of we started Fourth of July celebration a week early, and uh, so I'm not as c- competitive, or I think I'm not as competitive as I once was, and so we get out there, and, and we're playing volleyball, and I go to jump up, and first thing out, me and Caleb, my son, are one-on-one, you know. He's, he's not a little boy anymore. He's, he's a man now. And so I thought, I'm going to show him what I can do. So the ball went up right off the bat. I jump up, try to spike that ball. I come down. I hit the tire that the pole was on, and then I rolled across the yard. And I, and I was thinking in that moment, what have I done? This was a bad idea. But I jump up to my feet, and because uh, I wasn't going to show Caleb any weakness. Come on, somebody. And I believe in vulnerability, but when it comes to fighting your kids, come on, you got to stay strong. And, uh, and so later that night, Kelly asked me, she said, did that hurt when you fell? And I said, yeah, I did, but I wasn't going to let Caleb know it. So uh, anyway, so happy 4th of July weekend. We're excited you're here. How many of you are believing for big things this morning? And I know we're, we're in, you know, different times, but listen to me, we serve the same God. We serve the same Jesus who, who gave his life, and we're building a life, and, and, and we build our life. We just sang about it on that rock, and so, so we kind of want to get into this. I want to take time to honor Pastor Walt and Miss Joanne, and uh, he doesn't like it when I do this, but I like it. Come on, and uh, let's give him a big hand this morning. I didn't know he was going to be here, so the pressure is even higher. I got to behave today, and, uh, and so, but we're excited you're here, and we're in the middle of summer, but we're preparing in summer, and we're going to have a great fall, and we're launching. Come on. How many of you know everything in, in God grows, and it never stops growing? And so make a decision in your life. I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to evolve. I'm not going to get stuck. And, and, and so today I want to talk to you in, uh, uh, about something uh, based on that freedom. The, the scripture says it's, it's in Christ that we have freedom. And, and, and freedom doesn't mean the ability just to do your own thing. Freedom means that we gain Christ in our life. And when we gain Christ, we get all the benefits that he brings with that. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, we, we get love, and we get, we get the ability to forgive, and we get fullness, and we get purpose. And, and a couple of weeks ago, I talked to you about, about opening your heart that the first part of your purpose is to let God love you. And uh, I was really ex- uh, honored or excited as a church while ago, and I don't even know if Pastor Walt knew this, but Amber wrote that, that song. One of our pastors wrote that song, Let Him Love You. And so I thought that was awesome. Come on. And uh, uh, they did a great job with that. And, and then Daniel stole my message in communion, so we're in trouble today all the way around. But I was sitting down to lunch with the guys a couple weeks ago, and, and we were talking about, I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but we were talking about the story of Peter and how Jesus uh, uh, approached him and, and was, you know, get, given instructions. And you can read this in, in all the Gospels with a little different variance there. And uh, but we were talking about how Peter denied Jesus, and we we're talking about when the rooster crowed. And Daniel, Pastor Daniel Gomez, you know, just made a comment, and so I'm going to give him credit for this once, and then from now on, I'm not giving credit for this one anymore, okay? But he said to me, he said, I wonder what it was like for Peter after, after Jesus went back hearing the rooster crow every day. And I thought, you done made a mistake, Jack. I'm preaching that. And so, so Peter's in this, this place with Jesus, and you know, he's been with Jesus a while, he's confident, he's, he's, he likes his own ability, and, and he's in this place. And, and one of the scriptures, I'm not going to read it today for time's sake, but if you go back and study, the scripture says that, 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 that the enemy actually asked permission to sift Peter and to, and to test him out, and so he's in this place. And so Jesus ends up looking at Peter, and Peter and his confidence, and Jesus talking about going uh, to do what he needed to do so that we could all live in this freedom today. And so Jesus makes the statement to Peter. He said, before the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. And so Peter goes and said, no, I'll never deny you. You're my guy. I'm loyal. I'm here. And, and I'm confident that won't happen. Uh, you know, you read further in the story, we find out it does happen. Uh, Peter did deny him. He's in this place. Later on, Jesus comes back and restores him and, and, and tells him, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, and gives, you know, brings him back to a place of restoration. But, you know, we were in Israel not long ago, standing, in, and it's kind of a the way it's said, it's kind of like a, a canyon, so to speak. And listen, you could hear roosters crowing all day long. And so I believe when the enemy wanted to sift Peter, it was to give him a complex for the rest of his life. 
so that he would live his life not being able to move forward and every time during the day or during the morning when the rooster crowed, it was, it was the enemy's way of attacking. It had purpose to it with Jesus, but the enemy thought he could do this and he thinks he can do it with you and I. If he could remind us of the crows of our past, come on, he can keep us from moving forward. And so what do we do when the rooster crows? And so we're in this place, but listen to me, church. The, 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 when, when, I believe when Peter lived his life moving forward from that place, when he heard the rooster crow to him, it wasn't a reminder of the failures of his past. It was a reminder of the restoration of Jesus and the purpose that Jesus brought into his life. And just like God delivered Peter from his past, come on, somebody, he does the same for you and I right here, right now, today. And so... I got to looking at different things and, and shifting from you know, the life of Peter over to Philippians with, with Paul. And how many of you think Paul was a great, great ambassador? I mean, Paul, Paul was the man when it came to delivering the message, wrote two-thirds of the Bible. But he, had this, he, he built this relationship with God. He let God love him, number one, but then he embraced the values that God had. He embraced the, the, the word of God as the will of God. And so many times in our life, listen, I've watched it over and over. I've, I've lived it at times. But we get so far stuck in the past that we, it's like we can't, every time we, we move forward, there's that reminder, there's that echo. David talked about it when he said, God deliver me from the, the pit and put my feet on the rock. That pit was an echo chamber of a rooster crowing or, or, or an echo of the past. And so it's so easy, you know, we talk about freedom and, we, and today we're celebrating as a nation freedom, but with that freedom, Hector said it a while ago, comes purpose. And that purpose isn't to rehearse the past. That purpose isn't to rehearse your mistakes. That purpose isn't to rehearse the mistakes of others. That purpose is to receive the full empowerment that Jesus gave his life to give you so that you can go live the abundant life and you can be a light to the world. Come on. You can be the salt of the earth. And so here at the Life Church, our heart, we want to connect you with God's purpose. And so, so many times in organizations or, or in, in legal, legalistic settings, and I'll talk more about that with Paul here in, a, here in a minute, you know, and so if I were to ask you who's the most important, besides Jesus, who's the most important person in our church, what would you say? Some would say, well, it's Pastor Walt. Pastor Walt's the most important leader in our church. The most important person in our church is you because you can go places that we can't go to. You go, you go into the marketplace and you go out in the, the field and talk to people. You're in the, you're nursing, your doctors, your teachers, your lawyers, your, your plumbers. You're in, you're in settings and places. Think about it. If we were all completely free of our past and knew that and, 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 and we buy into that and, and believe that and get full, full empowerment, then the leadership here at the Life Church, we speak into you so that you can go do the work of the ministry. That's what the scripture says. And so if we can get people free from the crows of the past, or what do they do when we hear the rooster crow and we say, hey, the enemy says, hey, remember when you messed up here? Yeah, I do, but I also remember when Jesus restored my heart. You know, I, I remember when I shouldn't have said that to that person, but thank God, God forgave me. I remember when I let my kids down, but I'm not living based on that because I have a heavenly father who picked me up, come on, delivered us from the echoes of the past and sends us into places that are bigger than we are. And so every, everyone here, you're the most important person. And if you'll embrace that, 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 and think about it, if we're all living that way, accepting the freedom, that doesn't mean, and, and I know what some are thinking, well, pastor, I just, you know, I try, but I just don't feel that way. Jesus never holds your feelings against you, but your feelings are not who you are. If, if it was feelings, it, it, you know, it, we would all talk ourselves out of this deal. So feelings, listen, uh, uh, the word of God, you know, he gives us truth. God doesn't bend his truth to feelings. Come on, somebody. Truth responds to faith. And so feelings, if, if you stay in the feelings level, well, I don't feel like he loves me. I don't feel like she loves me. I don't feel like I get enough attention. I don't feel like I, don't feel like I have what it takes. Listen, those are lies, man. Those are, that's the rooster crowing in your life. And if you let it, it'll talk to you every single day of your life. But if you'll get a hold of what Jesus said, so my feelings may say this, but my faith says this. My, my, my feelings may say I'm too weak, but my faith says he's strong enough for both of us. My, my, my feelings may say, my, may say they don't like me, but come on, but I know what God did, did with me, so I'm okay with that. And, and I was talking to Daniel the other day, not everybody in life's gonna like you. Come on, we want them to, but we're okay if they don't. Not everybody's gonna agree, and we're okay if they don't. 
because we have a foundation that's not built on feelings. So it's not based on how we feel. It's based on the reminder. We did it in, 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 in covenant this morning in communion. We're reminded daily, come on, of what Jesus did. Jesus said, as often as you do this, uh, do this in remembrance of me. What are we remembering? We remember that he restored us. Come on. Well, we were on a path of destruction. And, and so I want to talk about something. So number one, if you go over to Philippians and you, and you study just Philippians chapter 3. Now, I encourage you to study, study a lot, of, you know, mo go through and read some of the things that Paul said. If you just go through and read that, you'll come a long way. But listen, God, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And God wants you to rise up. He's not going to bend the faith. His, he, he's not going to bend his will to your feelings. So he needs you to rise up. He needs you to rise up and be the person and live the abundant life that he's called you to live. But in Philippians chapter uh, 3, it says this. Verse 1, and I'm reading out of the New Living this morning. It says, whatever happens, this is Paul talking. How many of you know Paul went through some stuff? He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't walking on roads. He was paving roads. He was knocking down trees, actually. What few trees there is over there. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters rejoice in the Lord. And he said, I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. But look how it starts there. He says, whatever happens. He didn't say... He didn't say if something good happens, rejoice in the Lord. He said whatever happens, that's good or bad, that's, that's easy or hard, that, that, that's whatever circumstance is. Somebody's mad at you, come on, rejoice in the Lord. And that's not a religious thing where we put on this fake dance and fake it till we make it. And that's what I love about Pastor Wall. We don't believe fake it till we make it here at the Life Church. Come on, let's be real. Let, 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 let's not fake it. Let's just walk by faith. And so he says, whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Well, that, that, that word rejoice, if you, you, know, you go and study it out, you know, it's the joy of the Lord uh, filling the void in your life. But, the, but it's deeper than that. Listen, the, it, it's a reminder that God is constant. Uh, uh, God is a constant, unchanging source of peace, happiness, and contentment. Now, when I say contentment, I'm not talking about being lazy. I'm talking about be understanding who lives in you now. It's not, in a, it's not in formality. It's not in legalism. And Paul talks about that in Philippians chapter 3. It's a, it's a receiving of the full empowerment of God. But when I, the reason we can jo rejoice in whatever happens, he didn't just say with the good things. He said whatever happens, the reason that we can rejoice in that is because we have that unchanging, constant source of peace in our life. Anybody got peace today? If not, you will before you leave, right? And so it's a reminder of that. It, it, and God never uses, listen, he, 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 God doesn't use your past against you. He doesn't use your failures against you. He doesn't, he doesn't use your feelings against you. The enemy will. But God comes to restore. He comes to, to redeem us and give us a confidence that's not built in ourselves. And so our first thing this morning is we got to know where our joy comes from. If you allow yourself, it's really easy in life to let other events or other people or other things or other feelings or our past or our, our rooster crowing to define where we're headed. It's very easy to do that. And so we've got to know, we've got, we've got to have a knowing of where our joy comes from. That's why I said we're not faking it, but when we rejoice in the Lord, come on somebody, it's because we know that Jesus shed his blood to set us free. When we rejoice in the Lord, we know that we can walk by faith and not by sight, that we, we can read the Word of God and study the Word of God and hear the Word of God, and it's going to build our faith because we're not, we're not building on those feelings. Come on, we're building on the foundation of the Word of God, the same foundation that our, that our founding fathers built this nation on. Come on. And so we're building on this foundation, and Jesus said when you build on that foundation, you're building on the rock. You're building on a foundation. We sang it earlier, when the winds blow and the storms come, it doesn't knock you down. And the reason that that happens is because when you know where your joy comes from, which should be Jesus, come on, circumstances aren't gonna do it, but when you know where your joy comes from, then it gives you the ability to rejoice in whatever happens. Well, so-and-so's upset, that's okay, they're gonna get over it. You know, they, they, today things didn't go away, the stock market's down, it's okay, I know who my provider is. Come on, we know who we're tithing to, we know who we're giving to, we know who, who's leading our life, and so we don't get over that, we can rejoice, and that brings a peace in our life, so that Saturday and Sunday, listen, you can go and enjoy your family, you can enjoy your church family, and enjoy the hot dogs, like Hector said, we're gonna eat this afternoon. Pastor Walt's probably gonna eat some wild hog meat from another nation or something like that, I would imagine. And, and, and so we're in, this, we're, we're in this deal. Why not enjoy the life that Jesus came to give you? 
but we have to know where that joy comes from. And friends, it didn't come from showing up to church. It didn't come from just, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, just having this case of raw, raw mindset. There's only one way that that joy comes that fills a void that no other thing in your life can fill, and that's through Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's through Jesus who gave His life to set you free. So we know where our joy comes from, and so it's not based on circumstance. If you go and read, you know, Paul's teaching here, so you've got to understand in context uh, of the life that he lived. He, he, he wasn't talking about going to the Super Bowl and fishing at the best spots. Come on, he had a di- little different approach to life. He was doing a little different kind of business at that time. And in Corinthians, you go over and read, and Paul's, Paul's talking about being shipwrecked. And he's talking about being beaten and flogged and, and being in danger with Jews and Gentiles and, and, and people. I mean, he's talking about pressures of life. And then, and then he, he's the same guy that could come back and say uh, in, in another passage that nothing can separate me from the love of God. I mean, think about being viper bit and all, all these things that Paul went through so that we could stand here today and, and teach how to live the abundant life and teach how to be connected with his purpose and go to these dangerous nations that, that, we, that Pastor got to talk to last week and the different places here at the Life Church that we give the ability to reach. It's not based on, on, on circumstances that are always pretty, and it, but your faith can't be based on your circumstances either. And if you're not careful, Paul didn't say, hey, and, and, and live this life that I'm telling you to live as long as everything is good. Listen, we could all do that. If we didn't have any debt, we didn't have any bills, we didn't have any problems, if we got up every day, come on, and our wife and our, uh, woke up and, and, and from bed and the makeup was naturally done, boom, no issues. We didn't have to wait an hour and a half to go somewhere. Come on, somebody. I'm getting myself in trouble this morning. If, if your husband went to, wait, went to bed and you hit this button and all of a sudden he lost 2,000 calories that night, come on, and he woke up and that hidden ab that's over here somewhere was showing again, Come on, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, we go fishing and we don't have to put our fishing, our fishing line in the water, just boom, there it is in the boat. And we go on vacation and there's no lines and there's no, no family of 18 and you and your wife trying to get in front of them just to get a meal. Come on, somebody. <laughs> wouldn't that be great? But Paul didn't do that. He said, in all circumstances, I've learned to abase and I've learned to abound. Because my life is not based on circumstances. My life is based on faith in Jesus. And when I put my faith in Jesus, that's what I gained. I gained life. Come on. And life abundantly. And so, so through that process, if it was circumstantial based, then heck, we, you know, as long as everything is good, we're going to make it. But not everything's always going to be good. Not everything's going to be easy. There's going to be moments of pain and there's going to be things that we're going to face in life. And so we've got, to, we've got to have a knowing of where our joy comes from. And, and if, we, if we have that kind of knowing, listen, it sends us in a whole different pathway because God has a purpose for you. And if you're distracted by the feelings or, or distracted by circumstances or distracted by the past, then we're not going to be able to take the steps forward because every time you do, the enemy's going to bring that thought up, that, that rooster's going to crow. And what are we going to do with that? Come on, I believe we're going to beat it and we're going to take Jesus to the places that he called us to take him to. Amen? Number two, number two, Paul talks about in... in, in Philippians 3, 7 through 9, and I I thought this was powerful. He said, I once thought these things were valuable. And if you go back and study, he's talking about, you know, he was the, he's the, he's the guy, this guy was the real deal. Even, even before he uh, gave his life to Jesus, Paul was no joke. I mean, he, he, he followed the law. He was, I mean, he persecuted Christians. I mean, he, 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 he said, if any of you could brag or boast, I could be that guy. But, but he didn't do that. Here's what he said. And so he's talking, about, he's talking about his value here. And he says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them to be worthless because of what Christ has done. He said, yes, everything else is worthless. Listen, church, when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ as my Lord and Savior. And so Paul, Paul was letting it be known, hey, I once had these values, and these values led me in a certain path. And, and he's shifting back now to tell you and to tell me that, hey, what the values that you have really determine where you go. Can I help you in that this morning? And so if our values are based on, on, on the circumstances of our past, then we're going to repeat the same life over and over and over again. And we start to do good. This happens, this happens. We have this deal. This person gets mad. I mean, it's just patterns after it. And that's why you see people circle and circle and circle. And the people will come to pastors and say, hey, I don't know why so-and-so is going through that. Well, it's real easy. They're still, they, 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 they've stepped into knowing who Jesus is, but 
but they haven't fully embraced knowing Jesus. And when you fully embrace knowing Jesus, he breaks those cycles off your life. Uh, he, that's why he came. He came, he came to change your future. He came to, to change your destiny. And so when we step over into those places, and, and, and it's just the same old things, same old sayings. We say the same things. We repeat the same year. Uh, you know, we go through the same mistakes, the same battles in our mind, the same old deal all the time. Well, that's not, that's not the life that he intended for us to have. If we did that, we, we wouldn't be standing in this building today. Come on, somebody. And the pastor said, hey, it's not if, it's how. And, and he was open to possibility because of his relationship with Jesus. Well, it's no different from you. Maybe you're here today and you, you've never shifted in your mind. Maybe God wants you to buy a house or start a business. Maybe God wants you to restore some things with your kids and you haven't thought it possible because you've just been listening to the rooster crow. And God's saying to you today, hey, if you'll shift your values to line up with my values... If you'll shift your word to line up with my word, if you'll shift your ways to line up with my ways, you'll look back and think that old life that I used to live, just like Paul did, had no value to it. Compared to what I gained in Christ, it had no value to it. And, and he goes on to say there, he said, I even consider, I mean, look at this, it's really, really powerful. He said, he said uh, yes, everything is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ as my Lord and Savior. For his sake, I have, re I have discarded everything else, counting it as garbage. And this guy did some cool stuff. There's things you can do on your own. I mean, Peter, Peter did, I mean, he showed that he had a self-confidence. He'd cut your ear off, and I'm sure there was a time in his life he was proud of that. You know, we tell stories of being kids. Dad, did you ever get in a fight? I got in some fights. Yeah, I lived on the north side of San Angelo. Yeah, I got in a few fights. Did you win them all? Yeah, if I'm telling the story, I won every single one of them. And I might have got hurt, but like dad used to say, tough hurts, okay? I wasn't going to let them know it. But all that is garbage compared to what we gain in Christ. Because listen to me, what you can gain in selfishness is just for you. But what you gain in Christ affects your family and your children and your grandchildren and your city and your nation and the world. Because it's a, there's a value. So what, what, what we value, we become. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll have a value for things and we're not even aware of it. I, 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 there's a compassion in me for this with, where people are concerned because I believe God wants to heal hearts. If God can heal hearts, people can change their life. And so he comes to heal the brokenhearted. And so you may not be brokenhearted here today, but you might have somebody at work that is. And you get the opportunity to be that person in their life, amen, and to bring that truth. And so when we look at this, what the, the, our values line up. And so we may value worrying and not even know it. And because if I'm going to do what I value, if I, val if I value fishing, I'm probably going to fish. I value Mexican food. I'm going to be honest with you. And, 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 and so, and the other night I went to Hildago's. I got a confession to make this morning, if that's all right. I got a Mexican dinner, an enchilada dinner, and I ordered two pancakes with it. And my wife just watched me eat it. I have the Holy Spirit, and then I have Kelly. There's those two things. And so yesterday I had to eat bell peppers and a little slice of cheese and to, you know, to, to balance it out. But I feel better now that I confessed it, right? <laughs> I'm probably going to do it this afternoon too. So. But what we, we value, we do. And, and a lot of time that can be inherited, that can, that can be unintentional. Uh, you know, sin can be intentional. But, but we're not just talking about that. We're talking about traits and things. The, of of that, that, that rooster when it crows, how it pulls us back. That's why the scripture says we're not of those that draw back to perdition or destruction. We're, we're moving forward. You know, Pastor Walt came in the office a few weeks ago and, and, and you know, with, with some vision and some things stirring in his heart. And he said, I just, he said, I felt like God told me, it's not time for me to draw back. It's time for me to press on. And I'm thinking, man, here we go. No telling what we're about to get into. <laughs> And I'm like, I called Kelly and said, I need some enchiladas and I need them fast. <laughs> but, but that's the mindset. I can always move forward as long as my values are in Jesus. But if my values aren't in Jesus, every time that rooster crows, church, every time that rooster crows and you're beginning to take a step and it reminds you of somewhere you failed at, listen to me, we've all failed We've all missed it. We've all, we're all sinners. Come on, somebody. That's why we needed Jesus. He, he mediated all that so that we don't have to take steps backwards. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the same man I was 15 years ago. I'm not the same man I was five years ago because Jesus, come on, somebody. That's all right. Because of Jesus, 
delivered us. And when Jesus gets a hold of you and faith vision moves forward and somebody invests life into you, you can evolve into what God's called you to be. And so what we value, we become. If you value gossip, you're going to be a gossip. If you value anger, you're going to be angry. If you value your own opinion above wisdom, then you're always going to follow your own opinion. But if you value the word of God as final say in your life, then you'll walk by faith and not by sight. If you value the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will convict you. About the time you're about to do that old pattern or that old thing, you thought, you know, you, you got used to doing, the Holy Spirit will say, hey, take a little, sh don't, don't say that. Don't go there. Don't, don't follow that. Do something different. Evolve, evolve, evolve. And so God wants us to get a hold of that. What we value, we become. Abraham Lincoln said this. He said, I have no problem with failing in life. I have no problem with people failing in life. He said, what I have issue with is those that are content in their failure. God doesn't want us content in failure. We, we have a value system in the word of God. Paul said, that other stuff I used to do, you know, that, uh, that, that touchdown that I made or that business deal that you made or that thing in the past, you know, it, it was a great thing for you. And Paul says, hey, I used to be this way. And it, and it, was, it was good for me because it, it made him popular. But this isn't a popularity contest. There's only, only one who stands out, and that's Jesus. Come on. He's the standout. And so Paul's saying, I value it so much, I consider all those, all those accolades and all those things I did on my own, he said, I consider it as garbage. Most people are looking at, would be at that time looking at that and say, hey, you don't want to mess with that guy. There's something about him that's, you know, he, he's got it together. And you, know, you all know people like that. And so it's like they have the gold, the Midas touch, or they got this together. Listen to me. They go home with the same insecurities that you do, the same process as you do. Just the difference is you learn how to not allow that insecurity or that anxiety in, in, in those places to become the value in your life. And so less of me is more of him. And I said this a couple weeks ago, so it leads you to a place when, of not, not doing those things. You break the cycles, you break the chains, but it leads you to a place of learning the value of faithfulness. And faithfulness is not, 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 not based on just, just you know, doing it so I can say, hey, I did this right or I did this right. Faithfulness is in the moment. I can't be faithful in the past, it's gone. I can't even predict my own faithfulness in the future because I, I, tomorrow's another day. I'm not even worried about that. But we can be faithful in this moment. We can value this moment. And I've learned in life that if you'll value this moment, then it's gonna have a, have a big impact on your tomorrow. If I value this moment and, 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 and I waste it with wasted words or I waste it with moments that, of, of, of you know, worry and, and, and anxiety and focused on the failures of my past, listen to me. The past ain't leading us anywhere. Paul said this, Moving forward in the same verse, he said, I focus on one thing. I focus on one thing, forgetting my past. Forgetting my past. I'm no longer a martyr. I'm no, I'm no, I'm no longer persecu persecuting. I'm no longer a hater. I was that, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting my past. I focus on this one thing, forgetting my past. I was reading this, this article and it said that the average human being has over between 50,000 and 70,000 thoughts a day. I'm not an expert on this, but, but, but it was interesting. And I can read, by the way. You know what to like you, Pastor. And so, oh, between 50,000 and 70,000 thoughts a day, it says over 95% 90, of those thoughts have to do with reoccurring events from yesterday or, or the past or days leading up. And it said 80% of those, those 95% of those, those 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts are negative. And so I was, I, it hit me when I read it, and, I, and I've probably heard this before, but the greatest prison in the world isn't brick and mortar and wire and chains. The greatest prison in the world, if we, if we allow it to be, can be right here in our own mind. And so we get imprisoned to the past. We get imprisoned to this thing Paul said, you know, Paul had been shipwrecked. He'd been through some stuff, but he stems up and he says, I focus on this one thing. It takes focus to beat the past. I focus on this one thing. That means, and some of you, listen, I know you know how to focus because we see your pictures all over the world. Come on, with your Facebook and your Twitter and all this stuff. You can, take, you can, take, you can focus because you can take some pictures. It's the same thing. 
spiritually, I focus in to this one thing. He didn't, he didn't say, I need you to do 150 things. He said, if you'll do this one thing, if you will forget your past and you will put your life in the hands of Jesus and you'll change your value and you'll gain the joy and all the benefits that come from him, then you can go be the light to the world. You can go to the places. You can start that business. You can, you can some of you in here, you're, you're believing for a husband or wife, but you haven't been healed. This and that ain't gonna fix you. Two broken people aren't gonna heal each other. And so you don't need that. What you need is a revelation from Jesus and to take the time to hear from God so that you can take your next step. But that echo is not the truth. Come on, just because the rooster crows doesn't mean you have to buy into that. Peter heard it the rest of his life, believe me. You know, you hear roosters crows here in West Texas. But he stood in those valleys in Jerusalem and all these places and heard that every single day of his life and he could have said, man, that was the day I let Jesus down. But I believe that every day from that moment forward because Jesus restored him and all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Because Jesus restored him, I believe it was a reminder in that process, not of my failures, but it was a reminder of how good God is and how he restored me. And so, you know, I love, I love Peter being the same guy that, 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 that denies Jesus. And here's how you know there was a shift. You know, before he was cutting ears off and, and denying and all this stuff. And then he stands before the, the same people and he says, Jesus, who you crucified. I always found that to be interesting. That something shifted in him. Something shifted in his heart where he no longer based. He wasn't saying, hey, I'm the guy that denied. He's saying, hey, I'm the guy Jesus restored. And when Jesus restores you, come on, you're going to live different. You're going to think different. Your values are going to change. You're going to go in a whole different direction. Stand to your feet with me this morning. And so what we focus on, we become. And, and, and I want to read a verse to you in, in Romans. It says, for I'm persuaded, Romans 8. It says, I'm persuaded that neither Jew or, or neither death nor life, nor anger, nor principalities, nor present things, nor dangers, or any of these things, Paul says. He says, nothing, I'm convinced, nothing can separate me from the love of God. That was a man who understood purpose. He understood where he was headed. And I was reading this article uh, again this week about Howard uh, Schultz, if I said that right. He's the guy that, that, that came up with Starbucks. And how many of you have some Starbucks? Hector talked about it a while ago, a little bit of coffee. Come on. Coffee's, coffee changes the world. That's just the truth. Come on. And I had about 10 cups this morning. But, 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 but he, he went to, listen to me, he had, a, he had a focused vision in his life. He had a place he wanted to go to. He went to 242 banks, and they all rejected his idea. He finally found partnership in other ways. But listen to me. Today, if you say Starbucks, every one of you know about it has over 337,000 employees that work for him today, but he didn't give up once he laser focused in. And so I'm encouraging today, you know, if you learn anything from, from, from me in spe specifically, it's gonna be, hey, you can't let your past run your tomorrow. You can't live today by your past. Come on, somebody. Your story is one thing, but, but being broken down. And so every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Maybe you're here today and you said, Pastor, you know, it's 4th of July weekend. I'm here at the live church. But my past is, is kicking my butt. My past is, my, I, I'm struggling moving forward. I feel like I'm stuck in a place and I don't know how to get out. I'm ready to break that chain. I'm tired of, tired of those values. I'm tired of living that way. I believe that Jesus wants to break some things off of you this morning. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm ready to do something different when the rooster crows. I'm ready to go a different path when the rooster crows. And it's a reminder, listen to me, every time that, that past talks to you, that's not God holding your past against you because he doesn't do that. He wipes the slate clean as far as the east is from the west, the scripture says. And so if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I wanna move forward, my past is, is affecting me, I see it, I'm tired of that, that revolving door, that same path, that same life, and I wanna open up today to go on a different path. I want you to raise your hand this morning because I want to pray with you, stand in agreement with you. I see those hands. I see those hands. And we're just going to pray this morning. And I believe that God wants to break some things off, but it's your faith. Listen to me. You're choosing to, to respond in faith today. And, and I believe that's going to change. If you're here today, we're going to pray for that in just a second. You say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. If I died today, I don't know that heaven would be my home. And I don't want to take that chance. I want to receive Jesus into my life. 
and I want to fulfill what he's called me to do. I want to give my heart to Jesus today. If that's you, if you'll raise your hand this morning, God wants to, God wants to lead you. Come on, I see a few hands here. That's good. And we're just going to pray today. Say this with me. I mean, we're going to lend you some words, but it's your faith activating this thing. Say this with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe in my heart, confess with my mouth that you, God, raised your son from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I receive you today. I receive your will into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're gonna, for those that raise their hand, I'm gonna ask you to pray this with me today because we're taking a stand here. Say this with me, Father God, I open my heart today. I lay down my will. I lay down my past. My past is no longer my voice. My voice is in the word of God. My voice is the will of God. My voice is in what Jesus said. Listen to me, if Jesus said love, then I'm gonna be a person of love. If Jesus says give, I'm gonna be a person that gives. If Jesus says forgive, I'm gonna be a person that forgives. But no longer, listen, this is where you take authority. No longer, come on, say it like you mean it, no longer am I living by the voice of the roosters in my life, the failures in my life, the flaws that I've had in my life. Today I lay that down. I lay my will down and I say, Father, not my will be done, but I receive your will into my life. I'll listen to your voice, the voice of the good shepherd, the voice of the Holy Spirit that guides me into all truth. I'm a child of God. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm filled with the power of God. And I'm not going to be the same as I was once because of Jesus. And I take authority in that today. Father, we ask you to heal hearts today. We ask you to stir hearts today. We ask you to stir people in their calling today. Stir people in their purpose today. I believe God's doing something here. And some of you, listen to me, you've held back from stepping out in that purpose. God says, now's the time to press. Now's the time to go. Now's the time to follow that voice. Come on, my voice. The voice of the good shepherd. And as you walk into that, you listen to me. You don't have to do it all. I was talking to Daniel this the other day. Listen, when you, when you gain Christ, you gain his wisdom. When you gain Christ, you gain his wisdom. And so, you know, the scripture says that he will give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean desires that don't line up with his will. Come on, somebody. He will give you the desire. For some of you, God has some things there, and they're just lying there. If you, if you read the scripture, this is how, how one of the scriptures talks about it. just lies there until God puts you in position to breathe life into it. For some of you, you're called to be businessmen, businesswomen. For some of you, you got, you got, you're, you're called to walk in different things than you're doing. Listen, he's gonna stir you up and connect you, but, but listen, let him give you the desire of your heart, and as you walk it out, listen, and some of you, here's the biggest thing most people think when it comes to stepping out into something new. They think, I, you know, I don't know what it's gonna look like. Well, neither do we. Neither, do, neither You don't have to, listen to me. As you take the steps and walk through the doors that God opens, he breathes life into that moment. When you find the pathway that God has for you, God will supply the life that you need to go where you need to go. Amen? And so I encourage you, accept that and, and, and begin to meditate on those things. Don't go out and generate something on your own. But as God shows you the door and God shows you the pathways, receive that into your life. Listen, and when he breathes life on it, it always affects more than just you. It'll affect those around you. Amen. God bless you this morning.